This week, we're taking a deep dive into an important environmental issue that's impacting butterflies, specifically in the Midwest. A significant study from Michigan State University has pinpointed the primary culprit behind the decline in butterfly numbers and species diversity. Insecticides. This study, published in the journal Plus One, link in the description below, analyzed a massive amount of data collected from 81 counties in five states. Their research considered various factors such as land use, climate, and different classes of pesticides, including insecticides and herbicides. The standout finding from their work was that a particular class of insecticides, known as neonicotinoids, is closely linked to an 8% decrease in butterfly species diversity across the Midwest. What drives butterfly decline is a hard nut to crack due to rapid changes in chemical and genetic technologies alongside changes in climate and butterfly habitat, said Scott Swinton, a university distinguished professor in the Department of Agricultural, Food and Resource Economics. Our team was able to link 17 years of farm level data on crops and inputs with detailed county level data on butterfly abundance by species. This research is the first to evaluate the long-term effects on butterflies of herbicides, sprayed insecticides, and systemic insecticides while controlling for climate and land use change. Neonicotinoids are commonly used in seed treatments to protect crops from pests, but they have a significant downside. These chemicals are highly effective at killing insects, but they don't discriminate between pests and beneficial insects like butterflies. This study found that the increased use of neonicotinoid-treated seeds is strongly associated with the decline in butterfly populations. One butterfly species that has been significantly affected is the migratory monarch butterfly. Monarchs are well-loved and widely recognized, making their decline particularly concerning. The research highlights that insecticides, more than herbicides, are the main factor contributing to the decline of monarch butterflies. Butterflies play crucial roles in our ecosystems. They are important pollinators, aiding in the reproduction of many plants. Additionally, butterflies serve as indicators of environmental health, meaning their decline signals broader ecological issues. Understanding the primary factors behind their decline is essential for developing strategies to protect them which in turn supports the health of our environment and the sustainability of our food systems. The study also emphasizes the need for more comprehensive and reliable data on pesticide use. Specifically, it calls for better reporting on neonicotinoid seed treatments to fully understand their impact on butterfly populations. Along those same lines, on June 18th, the Natural Resources Defense Council reported that Vermont became the second state to take legislative action to limit the use of neonicotinoids due to the adverse effect on bees. Bees are also an important pollinator, which you may remember we covered in another video a few weeks back. Following the lead of New York, Vermont aims to address the issue of neonicotinoid use by adopting a similar model. This approach is based on extensive scientific research showing that neonicotinoid seed coatings are not only harmful, but also largely ineffective economically for farmers. These coatings are usually applied to seeds to prevent pest problems that often don't even exist. Instead of banning these seed coatings outright, the new law requires farmers to obtain a prescription from an agronomist. This prescription must show that the treatment is necessary to address a real pest problem. This approach has been very successful in Canada, where a similar program has nearly eliminated the use of neonicotinoid seed coatings on field crops without causing crop loss or switching to more harmful alternatives. Butterflies and bees are both important players in the cycle of life across the American landscape. The recent research by MSU demonstrates that one class of pesticide has shown widespread damage far beyond the benefits it was meant to deliver. Perhaps now we can make the shifts necessary to bring the interests of both agriculture and wildlife back into balance. Don't stop here, find out more. Visit the links in the description below for more in-depth information on the stories presented in this video.